Hello, this is Yogeshwar 7000 again and I'm back with another interesting topic on Vedic Astrology and today we will be talking about the planets and the seasons associated with this uh, with the planets so this is as per the ancient scriptures this is not out of experiences of astrologers this is coming directly from the ancient ancient scriptures and as per the Hindu year or the Vedic year there are six Ritus as it's called in Sanskrit or seasons which have been given and those seasons are in Sanskrit Vasanta or Vasant either ways and the second is Grishma the third is Varsha. The fourth is Sharad. The fifth is Hemanta. And the sixth is Shishira. Okay, so unfortunately, there's no translation from Sanskrit into English. So you'll have to just remember these six seasons Vasanta, Grishma. Varsha, Sharad, Hemanta, and uh, Shishira. Okay, so uh, basically, how it happens is uh, Vasanta approximately occurs between the middle of March to the middle of May. Okay, which can be translated into, I would say, springtime. You know in the west the kind of springtime and uh, the grishma is actually a hot season which starts from around the middle of may through the middle of july so that's grishma that's of course you can translate into summertime then it's varsha okay and Varsha means rain if you translate it into English and that's happens and this is based on the weathers in India of course and you know there could be slight variations as you go more towards the western part of the world uh, Varsha means rain that is approximately between the middle of July through the middle of September and then comes Sharada and uh, Sharada is uh, between middle of September through middle of November which can be called the autumn season or the fall season in the west so that is Sharada and then there is Hemanta so you know Hemanta is can be translated into winter season of course that's not the real translated translation from uh, Sanskrit into English but it can be translated in terms of weather to be a winter season which happens from the middle of November through the middle of January and then there is Shishira which is you know a little earlier than spring which happens between the the fifth or the middle of january through the middle of march so that's how shishira and then shishira of course is followed by vasanta which is spring season springtime so this has been kind of given to us by the ancient sages and the ancient scriptures and they have related the six planets with these six seasons so out of the seven planets they have taken into consideration six planets and uh, the planet which has been left out is the planet Sun here so six seasons and six planets that's the connection here and they the ancient sages left the planet Sun out the reason why they left the Sun out is it's a good question so please don't ask me but this is what they have related to to Vasanta the Vasanta season which is 
kind of the spring season and uh, which begins from the middle of March through middle of May springtime that has been related to the planet Venus okay or the Lord of that season if you you know put it this way the Lord of the season of Vasanta which is kind of a springtime the Lord ship of that season has been given to Venus similarly the summertime which happens and this is all in connection with India once again you know there could be slight variations as you go to other countries the summertime which has been given which happens between the middle of May through middle of July is the Grishma season which has is been loaded by Mars or the Lordship of that season has been given to the planet Mars okay and then after summer of course it is the rainy season and the Varsha time which happens between the middle of July through the middle of September the Lordship of or the Lord of that planet is the planet moon and of course we know moon is a Jalatattva or the water element anyways so the rainy season is connected with moon and then the Sharad season which comes after the rainy season which is between middle of September through middle of November the Lord of the season is Mercury okay and uh, after the Sharad which is actually autumn or fall whichever way you call it it's been you know it's the Lord of that planet is Mercury comes hay month which is winter time which is between the middle of November through the middle of January and the Lordship of that plant has been given to the planet Jupiter so Jupiter rules over the hay month season or the winter season so as to say and this little season which is between the winter and the springtime which is between middle of January through middle of March the lord of that planet is the planet saturn okay so how does it help this information this piece of information how does it help us in making an analysis when we do a birth chart analysis so it is very simple you know we know vasanta which is springtime is the time when you know you see flowers blossoming and you know love is in the air and there is happiness all around the planet Venus rules over it and then comes the hot period which is the summertime obviously the planet Mars rules over the hot because Mars is a hot planet and Venus is a planet of love so that's why you know the springtime or Santa time you know where you know lovers can meet and their flowers are around blues blossoming uh, and uh, and you know there's happiness in the air there's love and romance in the air that's Vasanta time that's Venus and then after that it's summertime which is Mars and Mars we know is a hot planet or uh, a very aggressive planet okay and then after that we know that the water element is ruled by moon so the rainy season again is ruled by moon so Varsha season is ruled by moon and there's water and as we know that moon rules over water and liquids so that's why the rulership of the planet is moon similarly when there's fall it is mercury and then winter time is Jupiter because Jupiter is you know uh, a planet which is you know kind of it's Kapha and so is Saturn which is between spring and winter that's Saturn uh, which is between the middle of January through middle of March uh, so that's both of these uh, both of these uh, seasons are kind of coldish seasons and we know that Jupiter is not a hot planet and Saturn is of course a very cold planet so Hamant and Chishir which is you know before the springtime is ruled by Jupiter and Saturn so what happens when you do an analysis well if your Venus is well placed in your birth chart then the best time for you to undertake an activity or even 
and and it depends on how venus is placed and what houses it's related to the best time of activity to undertake that kind of an activity is the vasantha time which is the spring time so you can and and of course venus is a karaka for marriage so obviously you know you can plan your marriage or some kind of a, you know a, a vacation out with your with your lover or you know a honeymoon or whatever during springtime that's the best time and of course you have to check whether venus is well placed in your birth chart or not similarly in in case you know your mars is well placed so any kind of activity which is related to those houses which are connected with the planet mars has to be undertaken during the summertime and you'll excel and say for example if mars is well placed and it's a warrior planet anyways and then if there's a war and i'm referring this to ancient times so if say for example there was a king and his mars is really well placed and he's planning a war and of course taking into consideration the the uh, the dashas or the periods operating as well uh, the best time to plan a war and an attack would be the summertime because the planet Mars is going to help him You know achieve his objectives his ambitions his conquest his war His military capabilities and in case similarly in case Mars is not well placed Then Mars is gonna hit him hard if he plans some kind of a military expedition during the time when Mars is ruling that particular season and it's more powerful and it's negative so don't plan that so that's the purpose of planning and of course like i said once again look at the dashas that's more important but yeah as a general rule you know you, you can look at the seasons what seasons favor you what planets get strong in those seasons whether those planets are good for you or bad for you in your birth chart similarly if moon is well placed in your birth chart then the best time to start an activity related to moon's relation to the house which it represents would be the rainy season because moon ro rules over rain and in case moon is badly placed then you know you, there could be some kind of trouble there could be trouble trouble in terms of you know water related diseases as well so that's going to hit you hardest during that season once again take into consideration the dashas as well how moon is affecting as far as the dashas is concerned so for example if moon is badly placed in your birth chart and the dasha is also or the period is also being affected by moon then rainy time could be a very challenging time for you in terms of the relationship of moon to that particular house and if it's related to the house of health or house of disease then you could you know get uh, some kind of a challenge with a water related disease okay and uh, similarly you know you can translate it similar way to mercury well placed mercury you know plan your activities which is related to that house with mercury in your birth chart in the time of sharad rishu sharad ritu or sharad season which is kind of the fall season because fall is ruled by mercury and if it's mercury is not well placed do not and try to protect yourself as far as you know that particular house relationship with mercury is concerned and that goes the same with uh, you know the winter time uh, jupiter and saturn you know they have to be checked as to you know how they are related to those houses in your birth chart and then plan your activities accordingly and do not plan anything which is related to those houses which are connected with saturn and jupiter in the winter time in case saturn and jupiter are not well placed in your birth chart and if they are well placed well that's the best time to start an activity so the sages have given you know there's rulership all kinds of rulership have been given to planets or connections have been given to planets could be colors could be you know metals we've already discussed that in our earlier videos could be um, 
you know the temperament to the elements and here we are talking about seasons so that's a very important way to analyze a birth chart in a general way I would say you know more detailed analysis is required as per the dashas and as per the karakas and as per the connection of those planets so on and so forth but as a general rule this is going to help an astrologer make a good analysis because you know these seasons can also complement uh, if, if they're positive they'll they're going to complement in terms of an achievement of your goals which are related to these planets in terms of a relationship with planets in your birth chart with the houses which could represents represent those activities you want to undertake so hopefully you enjoyed this video on planets and seasons in the meanwhile I would recommend subscribe to my channel and check out my website there is a link below and I will see you with an interesting topic on Vedic astrology very soon goodbye